Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at creating a destroyed city effect inside of After Effects. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, great. Now there's a tutorial on this. Now every movie is going to have a destroyed city. Well, if you've been to the movies recently, you know it's too freaking late for that. This summer, get ready for another very exciting tutorial. Subscribe now or die. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We've got a lot of fun stuff to do today. We're going to be adding in some destruction and some cracks. So let's get to it. Inside of our project file, we've got some aerial city footage that you'll be able to download from videocopilot.net. And we're going to drop it down into the new comp button. Now, one thing you might notice is that my recording is a little bit higher resolution, and that's because we're going to be doing a lot of small, detailed things. So this is actually our first tutorial in true high definition. The ultimate in high definition entertainment. So here we have some aerial footage of downtown Los Angeles. I was going to add some traffic, but I guess we don't need to do that. Maybe we'll take some traffic away. That actually might be more shocking. Okay, so what we want to do is 3D camera track our scene. So what we'll do is come over here to the window, open up the tracker, and we'll click on the track camera button. And this is going to do some background tracking and processing. Okay, perfect. Now we can see all of the different track points in our scene. Now what's cool about the 3D camera tracker is that it'll actually allow us to place objects and layers in 3D space. Now, before I generate my 3D camera, I need to tell After Effects where to put the center of my scene. So should the center be down here? Should it be the building? Now, because we're going to be adding a lot of effects to this building, I want to make it the center of my scene and set the ground plane to the top of the building. So what I'm going to do is select three points. So if I hold down shift, click one, two, three, I want to click three points that are on a flat area of a surface. And we can see that the target grid, this red grid, looks like it's flat on top of that surface. So what I'll do is with those selected, I'll right click and choose set ground plane and origin. And then I'll right click and choose create solid and camera. All right, so now you see a red solid that's 3D and our 3D tracked camera. So if I scrub through this, you can see the red solid stays on top of that building as if it's really in 3D space. So if I go ahead, click on our footage, click on the camera tracker again, we can bring those points up. Now another example is I could come in here, right click, create text, and now I've got 3D text floating in the air. So once you have this set up, you can really start to do a lot of fun things. I'll go ahead and just delete this. All right, so now that we have it set up, let's go ahead and create some destruction. So what I want to do is punch a big hole into the side of this foreground building. So what we'll do is select the camera tracker and I want to create a plane right against the side of the building. So what we could do is take three points, hold down shift, click on them, then I'll right click and choose create solid. And what that'll do is create a solid right there. I could add a grid. All right, so we can see it's perfectly aligned to the side of that building. I could rotate it, take the rotation tool, and just align it a little bit better, maybe move it over. Now, it's important that I use the local gizmo so I don't move it out of position because if I were to rotate it or do something like that, it's no longer going to align properly to the side of that building. So what we'll do is just turn the grid off, and I actually want to replace the green solid here with a big texture of a hole. So if we come over here to my project file, I've got some damage textures. And the first one looks a little bit like this. It's got a transparency around the edges. And what we'll do is select that green solid, grab that damage number one, hold down Alt, 
and let go. And what it does is it replaces it right into 3D space. So watch this. Photorealistic. Well, almost. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just turn off this uh, red solid. We'll just call this top solid. We'll turn that off. And so now I've got my damage here. And we could scale it up. Hold down shift. Use those local gizmos to slide it around. Move it to here. All right, next thing we need to do is color correction. Now, the one thing about our background footage is that it has a little bit of a green cast. So what I wanna do is create a new adjustment layer and uh, we'll hit uh, enter and we'll call this color correction. And let's come over here to the effects and choose curves. Drop that on there. Now I'm actually gonna move this down just above the footage. And what I wanna do is get rid of some of the green. So let's go to the green channel just bring this down a touch. Maybe go to the RGB and just, you know, add a little bit more contrast. A little. All right, so we've color corrected the background plate. Now let's go ahead and color correct our destruction element. So we'll take that curves adjustment, drop it on there, and then we'll go to the red channel and bring that down. Maybe to the RGB and just darken it a bit. What we're trying to do is color correct it so it looks like the building a little bit more. So we'll bring the uh, contrast down a bit. I think that looks pretty good. Now, if this were a background building, this might be okay. But because it's up close, we want to add some three-dimensionality to it and make it look like we're really looking inside of the building so it looks like we really can see inside of this hole. So what we're going to do is take this front damage layer and I'm going to take the pen tool and what I want to do is draw around some of this damaged area and create a hole that we'll be able to look through. So I'll hit M and I'll subtract the mask. And uh, let me switch this over actually. It's kind of strange having so much space here. So now you can see we have this hole punched in it. I'll hit F and we'll feather it just a little bit. So then I'm going to duplicate the layer. Control D, edit, duplicate, and I'll hit M and I'll choose add. So now the add is the one beneath it. So here we've got one layer and I've got my other layer inside. Now the inside layer I'm going to hit MM and I'm going to expand the mask. I'm actually going to turn the feathering down. Maybe just like a couple point feather. So what we're going to do is take this top layer. And we're going to call it mask. In fact, let's go and change the color of it just to make that clear. We're going to just make it uh, blue and uh, blue. So that basically we're only going to be using the alpha. So we'll put this below the damage. And then what I'll do is I'll take our damage layer and again, duplicate another copy. So what I want to do with this copy is hit M and I'm going to get rid of the mask. And then I'm going to unsolo the layers and I'll take the top copy here. I'm just going to add a quick tint effect just so that you can see where everything is. And what I want to do is move this down below the mask and I'm going to hit return and we're going to call this hole. Because what this is going to be actually is the destruction inside of the hole. So what I'll do is come over here to the track mat, set it to alpha mat. And then what I'll do is just turn this tent amount down. So I want you to be able to see this, but I'm just going to turn it down a bit. And what I'm going to do is push it into 3D space. So watch this. I'm going to push it, slide it back into place, and maybe that's enough. So watch this. Maybe we'll scale it up a bit here. We should start to see some parallax. So let's turn that off. All right, so that is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead, see if we can color correct the edges. So this is the front hole, and maybe we'll just darken it down a little bit. We wanna get the edges to match with our, uh, our plate, and I'll show you some other cool tricks to get that to look even better. So the front hole, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this again, Control D, and let's move a copy down here and scale it down. I'm going to hit M actually, get rid of the mask. So now we're just kind of being a little creative here. Maybe we'll rotate this upside down. 
and then mask out this middle part. So we'll take the ellipse tool. So I'm just taking a part of it here and subtracting it with a F and feather, just a touch. So that way it kind of just looks like more of a monster gouge of sorts. Now, what if we wanted to add some fire? What we could do is take one of the layers, like the new one that we made here, and duplicate it. And then what I'm going to use is some of the Action Essentials 2 stock footage. We've got some fire here. And uh, we've also got some smoke elements that we'll be using as well. And if you go over to the website, videocopilot.net, go to the products, you can check out Action Essentials 2. You can obviously use your own stock footage or some other stock footage, but for 100 bucks, you can get a whole bunch of really good action stock footage. We're actually using the 720p version, and that's plenty of resolution, especially in this case. So we'll come back over here to the comp. Now I've duplicated that hole, and what I'm going to do is take my fire, hold down Alt, and drop it onto that. And the reason I do it that way is I can hit M and delete the mask, and that way my fire is exactly in the right 3D space is all of the other layers. Now I need to rotate it, so we'll come over here to the rotation tool, make sure we're on the Z axis and just rotate it around like that. And we'll unsolo our layers here. So we'll push the fire inside of the hole here, scale it down a lot. Maybe we'll have it kind of coming out of the side here. All right, let's go and see if we can add another layer of destruction and give this a little bit more depth. So come down here, see, we have our main hole element and then we have our secondary element. So we'll call this uh, bottom hole. And we'll just turn that off. We'll take this front element and we'll duplicate it. Edit, duplicate. And what I want to do is solo it by itself and let's turn the grid on and then I'll choose effect keying extract and we'll move the extract above the color correction now the extract works like a luma key so what I'm going to do is key out the dark area so we'll just slide this over so let's just give it a little bit of feathering here so it's not too rough that looks good and then we'll unsolo it by the way, Control shift h is the shortcut I use to hide some of the gizmos and things. But what I'm going to do is take this and push it into the hole. So we'll just hold down Shift, and then I'll readjust it back into the middle. Maybe scale it down a bit, too. And so we can see it in there. Let's darken it down a bit. Because these ones are burned. They're scorched or something. So fire, monster, dragon, beasts something. All right, so if we look at just these parts by itself, it's good. All right, let's take a look at it all together. So that's giving us another layer of destruction. We can push it in there a little deeper. Let me show you another really cool trick to integrate this into the live action plate even better. What we're going to do is come down here to the footage and you remember we have our 3D tracking data. Now, I don't want to lose this. In fact, it's very important that I don't lose this because I need to use this later. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it, control D, and take the bottom copy and write camera data. And then I'm just going to turn it off and just keep that at the bottom. Then I'm going to take my two layers, the color correction and the city footage. Maybe on the footage, I'll just delete the camera tracking data so that it's just footage by itself. Then I'll take the two layers, the color correction and the footage, and pre-compose it. So layer, pre-compose. And we'll call this background, plate, and move all the attributes, hit OK. So basically I just moved it so that I have my footage by itself. Now I'm going to go ahead, set the color to yellow, and then I'll choose edit, duplicate, and we'll move it up to the top here. Then we'll come back down to our camera tracking data. And what I'll do is click on the camera tracker, and I want to create another plane right on the same surface here. So I'll just hold down shift, select three points, right click, create a solid. 
So now I've got this red solid, and what I'm gonna call this is beams. All right, so the red layer is gonna stay attached to the side of the building, right? And maybe I'll scale it up a little bit, and I can even rotate it, so it kind of aligns. Now, what I wanna do is turn the eye switch off, then come over here to the pen tool, make sure that layer is selected, and what I'm gonna do is draw on some of the beams here. So I'll zoom in here, and just draw on part of the beam. Now, if we turn the bottom layer off, you can see that I've drawn on part of the structure that goes past our destruction. So let's turn this back on and set the track mat to alpha mat. So now we can see some of those beams on top of our hole. And so now what I could do is take the pen tool and start drawing a few more. We could even make it look like they're bent just by the way that we draw them. So that looks pretty cool. We could even add in some of these uh, vertical ones as well. Draw those on, maybe even add like a cross bar area. And uh, you know, I'll just draw a few more here. All right, so I've added a few more masks to this outside area. And uh, if we take a look, we can see we've isolated those pieces. And now we're basically compositing parts of the structure back on top of the destruction. Structure on top of the destruction. Let's look that up. Root word for structure. All right, let's see here. The root word struct, meaning build, comes from the Latin structus. Pretty good, look at that, we're learning stuff. This is amazing. All right, so let's get back to it. Now, one thing about this is the edges are really clean. So what we could do is take our alpha mat, the red layer, and let's add a roughen edges effect. So if we take roughen edges, drop it onto the red beam layer, hide the masks, check this out. It adds a little bit of noise, so what we could do is maybe turn the scale down so it's a little bit more rugged. And uh, we could, you know, we could play with the sharpness, maybe even the border size. So that's pretty cool. It just kind of gives it a little bit of noise and uh, makes it look like it's actually banged up. One of the best ways to get this to look realistic is to get rid of all of the straight, perfect lines. So that just gives it a nice, more organic feel. Now, the other thing we could do is add some smoke coming out of this hole. So what I'll do is come down here to the camera track data, and let's just click on one of these, right click, create a null. And I just wanna show you this other workflow. So what I'll do is come over here, I've got this puffy smoke layer, also from the Action Essentials. Let's go and bring it out here, and uh, what I'll do is bring the anchor point down, just slide it down here. And also because there's a really hard edge on the bottom here, let's just add a quick mask and then hit F, bring up the feather properties and we'll just feather it out so that we have a bit of a softer edge. Then we'll set the transfer mode to screen, unsolo it. And there we go. So I'll make it a 3D layer. And you can see now it's kind of in 3D space. But in order to get it here, what I'll do is select that, hit P, select the position, hit edit, copy, then select our smoke layer and choose edit, paste. So what that'll do is move the smoke right to that position. All right, so now our smoke layer is right where it needs to be. Maybe I'll rotate it a bit. Maybe just pull it away from the wall even. Hit S and we'll scale it up too. So let's see here. Go to half res. Now to give it a little more dimensionality, I'm gonna duplicate it. Let's see, control D. And then offset the time and then move the copy over here. We'll just kind of deform it a bit. Maybe stretch it out. 
And also, let's lower the opacity on these two. So hit T. And we can just drop the opacity so that, you know, we can see through it a little bit. So let's take a look. Play this back. This is looking really good. Let's go and take a look at a couple of other cool things we can do to enhance our shot. All right, so we've built our primary destruction element, and now I want to go ahead and add some secondary elements around here and just break up some of the straight lines of the structure. So what I'll do is come down here to the tracker, select it, and we're going to create some new solid planes that we can swap out for some more destruction. Now let's go and select three points along this surface, so let's just click see here that looks pretty good I'll right click create a solid and actually we'll do one more let's come up to the top here and create another solid perfect so let's take this uh, green one first we'll come over here to the project and I've got a damage element that looks like some busted out windows and what I'll do is I'll take that and replace it. So hold down Alt, drop it on there. Then I'm going to take the rotation tool. And what I want to do is rotate it until it's parallel. Then I'll actually scale it up as well. All right, cool. So then I'll come over here, choose Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And we'll just dim it down a bit. And then go to the red channel bring that down a bit to kind of color correct it and blend it in there. Just watch out for like the black levels. You want to make sure that, you know, the contrast looks right. You want to make sure the rotation looks right. So this is all about just adding in those, those final details. Now I can even duplicate the layer, control D, and slide it over and then take a mask and just draw a shape around it, hit F, feather it a little bit, you know, and basically just start having fun and just start adding in stuff, breaking up the corners and breaking up the edges. So you remember we made this other one on top here. This is another fun trick. So I've got this CG crack element. So it's just kind of like an ambient occlusion pass of some cracks. And what I can do is with that layer selected, I can hold down Alt, drop it on there, switches it out, and then I'll rotate it. Then I'll change the transfer mode to multiply. Let's see here. So if you look here, you can see we're kind of breaking this edge up. Maybe I'll create a mask just around this front piece here. Hit F, feather it out some. And then I could, you know, I could do some color correction on this. I'm not sure what I would need to maybe just add in a little bit of that cool color. But you see what that does is it breaks up that hard edge and that clean edge and gives it a nice organic feel. So it's as if this is kind of a cracked side of the building. And maybe we could take it, just lower the opacity a little bit. All right, so you can see it just breaks up that edge a bit, gives it a nice result, and uh, it's really easy to do. All right, so I could add a few more cracks and a few more broken windows, and we'd be finished with this one building. So once you finish with one area, you're going to have a whole bunch of layers. So what's a good way to manage all of these different layers? Well. What we can do is pre-compose them. So what I'll do is come down here from the hole all the way up to the cracks, and I'm going to pre-compose it. So I'm going to choose Layer, Pre-Compose, and we'll call this uh, Front Building, and hit OK. Now, everything gets messed up because of the pre-comp, but what I'll do is click on this Collapse Transformation switch, boom, and boom. So now everything is going to work as if it's inside of this comp, except that it's in its own pre-comp. Now the nice thing about this is that I can turn this off and that way you're not rendering stuff that's not part of the area you're focusing on. 
Now, let me show you a couple of other important things that I learned while working on this project that I know will help you out as well. So let's go ahead and add some destruction to one of these background buildings, specifically a building that gets obscured by another building or obstructed, obstructed. We're not gonna look that one up. Here's the thing, let's just take one of these damage elements and stick it on this back wall. So we'll click on the camera tracker. We'll select uh, three points. Create a solid. Boom. Take that solid, replace it with some damage. Scale that damage up. We rotate it. Could also color correct it, of course. Come over here. It's a very green building. And uh, let's see. You know, again, be careful with your black levels. Sometimes you can kind of go back in in the end and, and get those dialed in, but I'm just trying to bring the overall brightness down and just melt it into that wall. Because frankly, I don't want to go through all that stuff that we just went through, so. All right, so this looks pretty good, except then I get obstructed by this foreground building. So what I want to do is select our camera tracking data, and I want to create a solid right in line with the top of this, something like that. And I know we've already created one, but I just wanna create it from scratch. So let's see, yeah, that's probably good. So we'll right click, create a solid, and that'll be the top. All right, so I'll go and turn that off. Now I wanna create one for the side as well. It's hard to know what exactly where the side of this is. That looks pretty good. And we'll right click, create a solid. So this is the part that's slightly tricky, that maybe masking is easier, but I'm gonna rotate this. Let me move it down, forward. And what we're trying to do is recreate the size of the building using these planes. So the top one here, rotate this, scale it. See, so I'm just trying to align it perfectly with the building. So I'm just rotating it. And so here we go. So we've sort of recreated this uh, this building. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a slightly better job. But All right, so we've got part of the box here. We'll slide through here. Now I can see some of my destruction. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just scale this piece and then slide it. So let's lower the opacity to make sure that it aligns pretty good. It's not bad. All right, so then I'll turn the opacity back up on these two, select those two, and pre-compose them. So layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this uh, foreground building mask, and hit OK. We'll turn on that collapse transformation switch. Now, we'll take that damage that we added, set the track mat to alpha inverted, and basically it's going to use the foreground mask. Now, again, it's not perfect because I didn't quite align it, but without doing any extra work, I have a 3D track mat that is working pretty well, and this is exactly what I did in the original example. All right, so this is a good solution to dealing with occlusion and things like that. Um, but another important thing is doing just 2D matte painting. Sometimes you don't need to do a full 3D track. So sometimes it's good to do a planner track or a 2D track as well. So what I'll do is go back to our original footage here. And we'll come up here to animation and select track in Mocha AE. It's going to go ahead and open up the footage. We'll hit OK. And what I want to do is track this foreground area because I want to change out the traffic and add some destruction or whatever. So we'll come over here and we'll add a mask around this area, something like that. When you're done, just right click to close it. And then we'll go ahead, click the track forward button. Okay, so the tracking just finished. 
And what I'll do is move the playhead back to the beginning. And then I'm going to right click on the mask that we just created. And I'm going to choose Align Selected Surface. And what that's going to do is align our data specifically to the first frame of our shot. Then I'll choose Export Tracking Data. We'll do After Effects Corner Pin. Copy to Clipboard. All right, so we'll jump back to After Effects. Let's turn our original footage off, turn our background plate on, and actually open up the background plate because I want to take our footage that's inside of it and I want to duplicate it. So right on frame one, I've duplicated it. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose Time Freeze Frame. So now I have a freeze frame of this point in time. And what I'm going to do is go to the beginning, choose Edit, Paste. And now I've pasted the corner pin data right into the shot. Now if we look at this, it's going to get a little crazy. But if we take the pen tool, select that layer, and draw a shape right around the area that we tracked, we can see we've isolated it there. Hit F, feather it a touch here. We can see now it looks pretty good. It kind of locks right onto that place. Now, to illustrate this a little bit more, I'll uh, just do a quick little tint on there. So check this out. It's actually a freeze frame in that area. Now, we do lose a little bit of the parallaxing, so it looks a little less three-dimensional. But it's so far away that we don't even really notice that much. Now we can do a matte painting. So let's say we'll take this layer, choose layer, pre-compose, and we'll leave all the attributes. And we'll call this matte painting. And if we open it up, I've actually got a matte painting already set up. If we look at it in Photoshop, you can see here's the original plate. I just saved a still frame of the first frame, painted out some of the, the cars or whatever, and then I added in some cracks. And then I brought it into After Effects. So what I could do now is I could drop this right inside the comp. And I have another layer called uh, Ground Cracks. And this is just some, you know, some scrapes, I guess. Uh, looks like some holes that are cracked across. And I painted it out underneath the bridge and stuff. Now, I could probably color crack this a bit. And by color correct, I just mean add a bunch of green. Maybe take out some contrast. So won't go too much into that side of things. But basically, do a nice little matte painting on a single still frame. Then if I go to my background plate, where I've frozen that layer, check this out. You know, I've added in this nice matte painting. I could even just jump over to the final output here, see what that looks like, not bad. Turn on a couple of my other elements, like my building here, nice. And uh, that's looking pretty good. So, and again, in the, uh, the end of the shot, I did the exact same thing for the background. Added uh, some stock footage back there of some smoke. That's actually one of the action essential elements as well. And, you know, I just added a couple of broken out windows here, a couple of pieces here and there. All pretty simple stuff. Just takes a little bit of time. Now, if I wanted to add some motion blur to this, what I would probably do is come in here, turn on the motion blur switch for all of the layers. Then what I could do is just turn on the motion blur switch. And you can see now it looks a little bit more integrated. So before it looks a little sharp, but when you actually have the motion blur on, it uh, it looks much better. And probably add a little bit of a blur to this background element, uh, you know, things like that. There's really a bunch of different ways to do stuff. You could do 2D tracking all by itself. You can do some 3D tracking. So I think it's really important to understand all of the different ways to composite so that you know what's the best way for your specific shot. It's really important to learn the technique so that people think you actually know what you're talking about. 
you know, actually I did a tutorial once. Um, it's called the ring and you know, it's kind of got a greenish blue color to it. And somebody said, Hey, can you do that tutorial exactly the same, but do it gold? And I was just like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it that I was sitting there re-recording a tutorial just for this guy. Man, those are the good old days. Now, speaking of which, if you want to add some cool uh, blue laser beams, uh, portals, whatever these are, if you want to add that into your shot, check out some of our recent tutorials like the Shockwave and even the Sci-Fi Weapons. There's a lot of similar techniques that you can use to create that uh, energy field. And I'm pretty sure there's one or two tutorials on creating energy fields. I guess finally, we could, uh, we could do an overall color correction on our entire shot. Do a color correction curves. We could, uh, you know, we could add a little blue. Maybe add a little contrast here. Like that looks pretty good. Maybe dim this, uh, this background element. You know, I like to use uh, like a levels adjustment for this, believe it or not. Because you can just lift and then even bring the gamma back over to kind of keep it dark, but... All right, let's take a look. All right, so pretty cool. Now, if you are an Element 3D version 2 user, what you can do is you can add some 3D objects just the same. So we'll type in Element, and we'll come over to the setup here, and we'll come over here to the Jet Strike collection, and uh, maybe I'll just do like a fighter jet. And uh, you can see that. Turn off the draft textures. Now I want to match the environment. So I'll come over here to the environment. And in the basic we have this one that's kind of an outside looking one that's very similar to the uh, LA scene. In fact, I think it's shot very close. So this is exactly the same bridge that we're looking at. So these are the overpasses. So... Look at that. That actually works out pretty good. Maybe I'll switch it to the physical shader for the body so that it uh, looks good there. Maybe I'll turn the uh, shininess up just a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And then I'll hit OK. Now you can see the jet right there. We could go ahead, turn on the group null. So we'll create a null object. That'll actually allow us to move it around. Maybe we'll put this, uh, and maybe we'll put this E3D layer below the color correction. We could color correct it ourselves as well. And of course, we can animate it flying through the air. But you can see here that it's definitely in 3D space, and it, uh, you know, it reacts to the environment. So I could, you know, I could scale it up. Now, one cool thing too with Element that if you go to the physical environment and you tint the color of the environment to the color of your scene, so watch this, as I tint it, you're actually getting that same kind of color cast on your object. You can even add uh, some heat distortion and some particle trails, all that good stuff. All right, guys, this has been a really complete tutorial. Try to cover as many different techniques as possible. Be sure to check out the website, videocopilot.net. We've got a bunch of other tutorials. Um, we've got some tutorials on some different jets and aircraft. A lot of cool stuff. And as always, be sure to check out our products page. We've got optical flares, lens flares, and of course, Element 3D lets you add a bunch of really, really cool 3D stuff inside of your After Effects comps. So definitely check it out. I'll make sure this footage and the destruction elements are packed up ready to go on the website. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.